How do you actually do well-being at work? It was a question that I was asked last week at a networking uh, lunch meeting. And uh, it was a great question, actually, because I'd said that one of the things I do is I go into companies and organizations and I help them with their well-being. I thought, yeah, that's a fairly kind of broad outline of what I do. And, um, and he wanted to know what it was I did specifically to help though, those who were participating, those who were in the sessions, actually you know, get better at well-being and improve their practices and, and what results were you know, coming from that. So it was a good question. So I thought, well, what I'd do, I'd obviously answered him there and I thought I'd share some of my, my, my answers here on LinkedIn as well um, because it's one of the things that I've been doing a lot more of over the last few years and certainly something that really, really floats my boat as a coach, being able to get in front of a live audience, not just as a keynote speaker, but actually also being able to roll my sleeves up, get down in the trenches and help people on a deeper level to start bringing about change, making plans of action to start doing things differently. And one of the ways that I do that is through my workshops. And it's a fairly kind of classic model, uh, I guess, from some of the people I've also spoken to who deliver training programs on, on a variety of different subjects, but coming into an organization and actually spending one to two hours or more with a group of employees who um, uh, often are told, right, you need to come along to this session. So that causes a few sort of things that I need to consider in the first place, like are they being told they have to be here? In which case, are they a little maybe closed-minded to the messages? So I have to make sure I head that off at the pass. Um, but also then to be able to go through some trainings to understand not just the theory, but the practice of it. And I do that through my workshops by trying to make it as practical as possible and as non-preachy as possible as well. And I don't think this is specific or particular to the corporate sector, but people in general don't like being told what to do. You probably don't like being told what to do. And anytime someone says this is what you have to do, um, if you're not 100% on board with that, then there's going to be a part of you that resists, pushes back and say, well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but when you've been a part of that process, that discovery process of figuring out actually what is going to work for me, what can I commit to doing what's going to be within my competency and my skill set that I'm able to do because I know because I've done it before I just didn't stick to it and when you understand what those benefits are not just in the long term through uh, with health fitness better kind of stuff out there in the future but actually how it's going to impact your day-to-day -day, moment by moment life as well so how is it what you choose to do not right now with your diet your activity your sleep your hydration, how are those things going to impact how you feel inside and how you perform outside in the next um, hour, the next 24 hours? And when we understand how this, these two things connect, the what, the well-being stuff, and the, we have the mindset and the habits to actually, or the processes rather, to create habits around those things um, and understand how they connect into our ability to perform and feel good about it in the process, that's when we start getting the, the starts of behavior change. One of the other things that I often do, I try to do this as, as many times as possible with these workshops, is to combine it with an online op option as well, an online program where I can lead people through this implementation program, representing some of the same information with more case studies, perhaps more tools and resources that allows them to, instead of going back to their day-to-day -day feeling pumped up and motivated to make some changes and then go back to just the usual grind and not doing any of those things, or maybe just doing a couple of those things, the implementation program online for 21 days, 28 days afterwards, it increases the chances of implementing more of those things. More people then have better results as a consequence of blending it with this online offering, online program as well. It also means that people have access to me. So I always make myself available to those who are on the online um, implementation programs, which gives them that safety net. If they're not understanding something or they're, you know, they're struggling with a specific challenge, then, hey, look, I'm here to help with that as well, just find me an email back. And that safety net doesn't always get used by everybody, of course it doesn't, but it certainly increases the, um, the sense of support that, that uh, most people get from doing those programs. And again, I got that from some of the feedback that I've carried out after the, uh, the workshops and trainings that I've done in the past. So if you are watching this video and you've seen some of the content that I've put out recently and you're thinking, okay, this could be something for, for my company or I would like to do this. If you're a team leader 
um, in an organization and you uh, regard yourself or your organization as being high pressure, high performing, um, and you have a fairly sedentary lifestyle because of the nature of the work you do, this is my sweet spot. This is where I work best because uh, a lot of my programs are dialed into those specific challenges. I know that you can't do everything. I know you probably can't add in training for an Ironman <laughs> to, uh, to the mix of everything else that you're doing. I know that what can add pressure and, and, um, uh, and what can help relieve some of that pressure. So we look at mindset strategies, resilience strategies, optimism, motivation to really support that and create this minimum baseline of effective well-being strategies that, that, that move into and support the, uh, the, the practical performance in the workplace, but also I said, most importantly, for me anyway, as a coach, is how you feel as an individual. So if you think this is something that could be of value to you, or you want to have a conversation with me about it, then just send me a message, leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts about how this sounds like it could work for you and your organization, and I'd be happy to have a conversation about that with you.